This is where we will get started with our overview on AWS certification exams and why we need to get Solution Architect Associate certification first. Why it is a good idea to learn AWS? AWS is one of the hottest career option for IT professionals today. Let's do something interesting. Just Google the word AWS skills and you will find some of the interesting results on the first page. As per Forbes, many of the US federal agencies are moving to cloud first policy, but they are unable to find enough resources to perform this migration. Similarly in UK too, demand for cloud skills has shown a growth of 20% for over the last couple of years as per the UK government survey. Irrespective of you being certified or not, for IT professionals, cloud computing skills are becoming an essential item in the resume. Employers are actively and increasingly looking for employees with cloud experience, which is all the way from business requirements to the actual cloud implementation. Also, please check the job search websites like dice.com or monster.com. You will come across around 3500 AWS related jobs as of today in DICE. Why do you want to get AWS certified? Before we go into details, let's analyze some numbers. Courtesy blog post in globalknowledge.com. Our certified solution architect makes $120,000 per year. As per Glassdoor, the salaries are even higher. An average AWS Solution Architect makes $150,000 per year as per Glassdoor. According to recent survey conducted by the Global Knowledge, AWS Solution Architect is the highest paying certification for 2016 in the entire IT world. The same survey also shows that Certified Solution Architect earned a higher salary than Certified Project Management Professional or PMP. Do you still want more reasons to get certified? Before we get into AWS Solution Architect Associate certification details, let's review the AWS certification paths and available certifications. I am recording this video on April 2019. As of today, we have 10 certifications. I am sure AWS will be introducing more certifications on upcoming days. We can break AWS certifications into four different levels. Foundational, Associate, Professional and Speciality. These levels are defined based on your experience and difficulty of the exams. I will be discussing them in detail in the next few slides. In addition, we can logically group these exams based on the role. Based on your job function or role, you can focus on one of the groups such as Cloud Practitioner, Architect, Developer or Operations. AWS Cloud Practitioner certification is for individuals in a larger variety of cloud and technology roles. The expectation is that you have six months of experience in AWS cloud with some industry knowledge. This exam covers four domains, including cloud concepts, security, technology, and billing and pricing. If you are totally new to AWS or cloud technologies, you can start your certification journey from here. I mainly suggest this for non-technical professionals, including program or project managers, business analysts, sales and marketing guys. Now let's look into associate level certifications. Associate level certifications are one level higher than foundational certification. AWS expect you to have one year of experience in AWS cloud related services and solutions. Associate level has three certifications. AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate, AWS Certified Developer Associate, AWS Certified SysOps Admin Associate. 
Solution Architect Associate mainly focuses on how to architect and deploy secure and robust applications on AWS technologies. This exam is for anyone with at least one year of hands-on experience designing highly available, cost-efficient, fault-tolerant and scalable and distributed systems on AWS. Developer Associate exam validates the proficiency in developing, deploying and debugging cloud-based applications using AWS. This exam is for anyone with one or more years of hands-on experience developing and maintaining AWS-based applications, plus in-depth knowledge of at least one high-level programming language. So if you are coming from software development background, this is the right exam for you. SysOps Admin Associate validates your technical experience in deployment, management and operation of the AWS platform. This exam is for anyone with one or more years of hands-on experience operating AWS based applications. Mainly this is for operation or system administration professionals. From my experience and research, SysOps Admin Associate is the most difficult among the three. So I will not advise you to start with SysOps Admin. But currently, if you are working as an infrastructure administrator and managing VMs, storage or networking, or managing logging and monitoring tools, SysOps Admin would be the better certificate to start with. If you are coming from non-sysadmin background, I would strongly suggest you to try either Associate Solution Architect or Associate Developer Certifications. Let me share a secret with you. Both of the certifications share 50% of the content. That means if you prepare for one exam, you already know 50% of other. In my view, Associate Developer Certificate is the easy one. However, from the context of gaining knowledge and learning cloud concepts, I recommend Associate Solution Architect. Solution Architect Associate Certification covers key AWS services and requires you to understand how to architect and deploy secure and robust applications on AWS technologies. Even though it is a bit hard, I would advise you to face the Solution Architect Associate exam first. But again, it is totally up to you and how you want to align your current role with these certifications. Also, there are no prerequisite to take Associate level exams. Without foundational certificate, you can directly appear for any of the Associate exams. In this video, I will be mainly focusing on solution architect preparation. But again, remember, you can relate 50% of the content with developer associate. Also, most of the upcoming tips will be applicable for developer exam preparation too. Before I start discussing around solution architect associate preparation, let's finish other two certification groups, professional and specialty. AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional Certification validates your advanced technical skills and experience in designing distributed applications and systems on the AWS platform. AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Professional Certification validates your technical experience in provisioning, operating and managing distributed application systems on the AWS platform. Both of these exams are anyone with two or more years of hands-on experience designing and deploying cloud architecture on AWS or operating and managing AWS environments. As you guessed, professional level certification are one level higher than associate certifications. In the past, if you want to take any professional or specialty exams, you have to complete the associate level certification first. But recently, they have changed the rule to allow anyone to take professional level or specialty exam 
without any prerequisites. One way it is good because anyone directly can attempt specialty or professional exams. However, from my view, it is very difficult to prepare and try the professional or specialty exams without strong working experience or associate level certification. So I encourage people to get associate level certification, especially Solution Architect Associate Certification before getting into professional or specialty exams. Again, it's my personal view. AWS offers four specialty certifications, Advanced Networking, Big Data, Security and Machine Learning. I expect more on upcoming days. These specialty certifications are designed to validate advanced skills in specific technical areas. All these exams are anyone with two or more years of hands-on experience in the associated specialty domains. AWS Certified Security Specialty Certification focuses on your technical experience in securing the AWS platform. This exam is for anyone in the experienced security role. AWS Certified Big Data Specialty Certification focuses your technical skills in designing and implementing AWS services to derive the value from the data. This exam is for anyone who performs complex big data analysis. AWS Certified Advanced Networking Specialty Certification validates your technical knowledge in designing and implementing AWS and hybrid IT architecture at scale. This exam is for anyone who performs complex networking tasks. AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty Certification validates your technical skills in building, training, tuning, and deploying machine learning models using AWS Cloud. This exam is for anyone who performs the development or data science role. As I mentioned before, they have changed the rule to allow anyone to take specialty exam without any prerequisites. I have both professional certifications and one specialty certification in security domain. I felt specialty certification is more difficult than professional level certification. Therefore, I encourage people to get the Associate Solution Architect certification before getting into professional or specialty exams. In this video, we will see like what kind of work AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate do. As a solution architect, you are expected to perform the following job functions. I have taken this from AWS website. 1. Designing and deploying scalable, highly available and fault tolerant systems on AWS. 2. Lift and shift of the existing on-premises applications to AWS. 3. Ingress and egress of data to and from AWS. 4. Select the appropriate AWS services based on data, compute, database or security requirements. Fifth, identifying appropriate use of AWS architectural best practices. The last one, eliminating AWS cost and identifying cost control mechanism. What it means? In general, the solution architect converts the requirements into architecture, design, and ultimately delivers the blueprint for the solution. In AWS world, multiple services span across various IT infrastructure and application components including compute power, storage, networking, database, data warehousing, content delivery, and much more. As an AWS solution architect, you will be responsible for picking up the right service from this pool and design and deploy highly available and scalable enterprise IT system based on the given business requirements. You take the business requirements, you convert them into a available, scalable enterprise IT system. 
Since AWS is a private cloud and physically not located inside of your organization, solution architect should include security elements for network infrastructure and incoming or outgoing data. The data security is another important prospect of a solution architect. Also, it is expected that the final system which you produce should follow the architectural best practices and cost effective measures. It's not that you only provide the solution, it is supposed to follow the best practices and as well as reduce the cost of your existing infrastructure. Amazon services are more like a Lego blocks. You can design a simple box or a battleship using them. As long as you know the right blocks and elements to select and with some physics and creativity. Same is for AWS solution architect. You are expected to design and deploy wide range of IT solution by selecting the AWS services with scalability, availability and security in your mind. So at the end, you design a solution and make sure the solution is scalable, available and secure and also cost effective. Let's review exam objectives of the Solution Architect Associate. As our first step, let's visit https aws.amazon.com slash certification webpage. Scroll down to Certified Solution Architect Associate section. Click the link to go to Certified Solution Architect Associate page and download the exam guide. The exam guide is your basic artifact to start the preparation. Bookmark or save it somewhere. I extracted needed information from the exam guide and developed next few slides to make things easier. Let's see what are the primary objective of the exam. First objective focuses on define a solution using architectural design principles based on customer requirements. When they say define a solution using architectural design principles, it means you cannot just design or provide a random solution to your customers. As a solution architect, you have to validate your solution against architectural design principles or best practices. For me, it is more of providing architectural patterns and advice on how to design a system that are secure, reliable, highly performing and cost efficient. It includes a discussion on how to take advantage of attributes that are specific to the dynamic nature of cloud computing like elasticity and infrastructure automation, etc. The second objective states provide implementation guidance based on best practices to the organization throughout the life cycle of the project. The second point is more about implementation guidance based on best practices. As a solution architect, we should know how the cloud computing differs from the traditional data center and how to apply the best practices for the cloud to any lift and shift or new applications. Mainly, best practices from the aspect of scalability, immutable infrastructure, automation, loose coupling, high availability, cost optimization, caching and security. I don't want to go through the details of each one of them here, but to get a feel for, take one example. Immutable infrastructure, one of the best practice. In a traditional environment, you have to work with fixed resources due to upfront cost and lead time of introducing a new hardware. This would drive practices like manually logging into server to configure software or a fixer issue or hard coding IP addresses, etc. When designing for AWS, you have the opportunity to take advantage of the dynamic provision nature of cloud computing. You can think of servers and other components as temporary resources. You can launch as many as you need and use them only for as long as you need them. If there is an issue with one of the computing server, you don't troubleshoot you simply replace the server with the new one. 
you build the server once create the image and then use it on different environments when needed you launch a new instance of the server instead of troubleshooting the existing one but to implement the immutable infrastructure you should know how to take advantage of attributes that are specific to AWS cloud like AMIs and CloudFormation automation. You may be thinking how I know all this stuff. Some of the resources that you can use to gain the knowledge are white papers. As per the exam guide, you should review architecting for the cloud white paper and AWS well architected web page which contains collection of multiple white papers. Now let's move on to recommended AWS knowledge. As per the exam guide, here is the list of things you should know or knowledge you should have. One year of hands-on experience designing available, cost efficient, fault tolerant and scalable distributed systems on AWS. Hands-on experience using compute, networking, storage and database services. Hands-on experience with AWS deployment and management services. Again, don't get disappointed. It is recommended by AWS but not mandatory requirement or prerequisite. I strongly believe you can successfully complete the certification without such experience provided that you do hands-on practice during your preparation. So please spend more time on hands-on before you attempt the exam. The next group of requirements are ability to identify and define technical requirements for AWS based application. Ability to identify which AWS service meet the given technical requirement. Knowledge of recommended best practices for building secure and reliable applications on the AWS platform. Don't worry, needed abilities and knowledge can be gained from you are learning of various AWS services and reviewing white papers from AWS website. We will be reviewing available paid and free resources later in the video for your exam preparation. And I believe those resources will help you to gain the knowledge to face these requirements. The last group of requirements are understanding of basic architectural principles of building on AWS cloud an understanding of AWS global infrastructure, an understanding of network technologies as they relate to AWS, understanding of security features and tools that AWS provide and how they relate to traditional services. Again, using the right preparation resource, following my study plan will definitely help you to gain the needed understanding of mentioned areas. Now let's move on to exam domains. Previous version of the exam had four domains including design, implementation, data security and troubleshooting. It's more focused on the life cycle of the infrastructure project. Most of the infrastructure related projects normally follows design, implementation, deployment, troubleshooting and ongoing maintenance. The current version is more focused on deployment of AWS infrastructure based on best architectural practices. It addresses foundational areas like cost, security and efficiency which are neglected more often. In addition, it focuses on how your design decisions impact the business. Here is a list of main exam domains and their weightage. AWS has divided the exam questions into five different exam domains. Each domain has different weightage. In this exam, the total number of questions are 65. I thought of going through this later in the session, but it's better to discuss this now. Based on the weightage here, for an example, you get 10% from design cost optimized architecture domain, which is six or seven question out of 65. We have five domains here. Domain one, Design Resilient Architecture covering 34%. Domain 2 Define Performant Architecture covering 24%. Domain 3 
specify secure applications and architecture covering 26%. Domain 4, design cost optimized architecture covering 10%. Domain 5, define operationally excellent architecture covering 65%. We will review the exam domains in detail later in the course. Let's move on to the core of this course. Where to find resources for exam preparation? Some certified engineers have described this exam as difficult. But most of them tell you that it takes considerable amount of studying to pass the exam. Therefore, not surprisingly, that you are going to need multiple study materials. And the good news here, that you can choose from variety of resources and formats. You have to make sure to select the right type of material that fits your lifestyle and study preference. Let's look at the different available study materials to consider that will help you to pass the exam. Starting from paid programs and all the way to free ones. If you prefer a classroom setting and you think interaction in the classroom will be beneficial for you, you don't have much option apart from attending training program from AWS or AWS APN training partners. AWS recommends a three-day training course called Architecting on AWS and four-hour session called AWS Certification Readiness Workshop. I think it's AWS Certification Exam Readiness Workshop before taking the exam. As per the description from AWS website, Architecting on AWS course covers the fundamental of building IT infrastructure on AWS. The course is designed to teach Solution Architect how to optimize the use of AWS Cloud by understanding AWS services and how these services fit into the cloud-based solution. It also teaches you the AWS best practices and recommended design patterns. The one thing I understand from this course, the best thing about this training course is, you will be presented with case studies from various AWS customers on each topic throughout the course, how this organization designed their infrastructure and what strategies and services they are using for successful cloud deployment. You can see organizations like Netflix, how they were using different AWS components and how they become successfully implementing a cloud infrastructure using them. You are basically learning from experience of others and also what AWS thinks as the best. So it's kind of like combination of experience and the best practices. By attending this training program, you can gain both of them. You can gain experience from others and the best practices from AWS. This is a three days course. It costs you around 1950 US dollars, around 2000 dollars and available on classroom and as well as online. The next course is four hour session of AWS certification exam readiness workshop. It is a workshop. Mainly this workshop teaches you how the exam is structured including question formats, content domains, and breakdown of questions across those domains. This four hours workshop costs you 225 US dollars and available on classroom and as well as online. I got a great news for you. I'm covering exactly the same topics in this course for free. And it will let you save 225 US dollars. Are you happy? Adding both the option above, you may need to spend 2200 US dollars for attending in-person classroom training. The advantage, you can ask questions directly to your tutor in live in-person classroom setting. Obviously also a great place to network with other certification preparation students and possibly forming a study group where you can study outside of the classroom after the class is completed. I don't suggest you to spend 2200 US dollar for exam preparation until your employer is ready to send you for this training program. Remember, architecting on AWS is not just designed for exam preparation. 
It is also a basic AWS training program for anyone who wants to specialize in AWS. Therefore, some employers may encourage their employees to take this training program. If an employer is ready to do that, then I don't have any problem of spending that kind of a money for this particular program. Now let's explore less expensive of preparing for the exam in the next video. In this video, let's explore the less expensive way of preparing for exam. When I prepared for my exam, I did extensive research on training programs available on the web. I found the following three training providers who is providing recorded video libraries for AWS certifications preparation. Linuxacademy.com, acloud.guru and cloudacademy.com. I would not go into details of them here, but I will provide an overview about each of them with some high level pros and cons of each so that it can help you to make a quick decision and start your preparation. Also, just a disclaimer, I am not affiliated with any of them in any way. I am not getting any kind of a bonus or I am not getting any kind of a referral fee for referring them here. Linux Academy provides in-depth course materials, very detailed coverage of each topic. They also provide free lab environments where you can practice without spending money from your pocket. But the course does not provide much exam tips or does not highlight exam points or questions. It is a monthly subscription priced at $29 per month. But they also have multiple courses in many different tools including software configuration management, build and release. I have noticed there is a course for even basic Linux as well as some of the advanced Linux and Unix concepts. You get access to all of them with your subscription. If you take two month subscription to prepare for your exam, it might cost you approximately $58. Acloud.guru offer Solution Architect Associate course for $29. Their content is very well designed and each topic is explained in brief. But it does not cover all exam topics and contents are not fully updated with the new addition to exam scope. I would say approximately 20% of the exam content are not covered in this course. Also, you will be required to have your own lab environment to practice in. Let's not worry about this now. I will explain you later how to get AWS free tier account and its advantages. About Cloud Academy, I haven't explored it much and I am not very impressed with their content or the way their course is organized. So I am not really sure about their quality. As per the reviews, their course is being used by Fortune 500 organizations. It is on monthly subscription priced at $25 per month approximately. Again, it's a subscription based, so you can get other courses too. You know, even they have a courses regarding Google Cloud, AWS, configuration management tools. From my experience and knowledge, I would suggest you to use both linuxacademy.com and a cloud guru. A cloud guru provide high level view and exam tips. Linux Academy provides little more in-depth of the same topic. So you get both of them. So you can initially go through Cloud Guru and if you have any doubts, you can refer Linux Academy so that like, you know, you get more information on the same topic. Please view the sample videos before buying any of them. However, none of the above providers conduct any live online training program or provide dedicated tutor or coach to help you to answer your question or keep interaction going on. They are purely self-paced training program. We went through in-person and online options for your preparation. In-person is more expensive and bootcamp style, which may not be the best preparation method. Video libraries are good if you are disciplined enough not to procrastinate and ready to dig your own to learn additional information from other resources. I have received number of requests from my students and friends. 
if I can conduct live online classes so that they can get best of both. Therefore, I have started live online classes three years back and successfully completed 36 batches on Solution Architect Associate so far. Our online live classes runs between 8 to 10 weeks using web conference tools like Webex or Zoom. We have two sessions per week, two hours of each, including theory and hands-on. So we are looking around 40 hours of total for the whole program. There are some great advantage by taking my program. The importance of direct interaction between student and tutor cannot be overlooked. I or some other AWS certified instructor will be available to interact and answer your questions during the class. You can also interact with other students in the class. Most of us have other work and professional commitments. We cannot spend all our time only on the exam preparation. So we distributed the content over 8 weeks which will provide better learning experience and stay focused on the preparation. We make sure to update the content on every batch since we continuously receive feedback from our existing students. Our batches are small and will not allow more than 15 students so that we can provide better attention to each student. We are not expensive as AWS and we offer early bird specials for just $499 which is 50% off from the original price. And we also provide 100% money back guarantee for our classes. If you are interested, please check out our website awspro.academy for more information. You can find current schedule and availability under attend live AWS certification classes online page. Or feel free to send email at info at awspro.academy. Again, I have another great news for you. When I prepared for my exam, I had created the study guide and I will provide you the copy of it for free. Also, I will walk you through my study guide later in this course. To get a copy of my study guide, please sign up at signup.awspro.academy. Again, signup.awspro dot academy in the last couple of videos we have seen how to prepare exam using a paid resources now we are going to see how to use free resources to prepare for the exam let's say you guys don't want to spend any money on the above websites like linux academy or a cloud dot guru don't worry, you can prepare on your own without spending a dollar. Let me show you how to do that. When you search certain topic from my exam study guide in the AWS website, AWS itself provides some introductory videos. It is a very good start to understand the topic and make the beginning. Next, you could search on the same topic on YouTube and you will find across lot of videos, especially few videos from Amazon reInvent. Amazon reInvent is an event where they announce new offerings and run workshops on various services. It is a global customer and partner conference held every year in Las Vegas. You can find the recorded session of these events on YouTube. But I would suggest you to try 200 level first as they are fundamentals. Then move on to 300 or 400 levels which are advanced level topics. Also, you will notice the Linux Academy and A Cloud Guru have posted some of their training video sessions on YouTube. I would strongly recommend you to watch them because they were using YouTube to get more audience to their courses. Apart from all, the next most important topic in preparation is AWS FAQ. Fake. 
frequently asked questions. Each topic has its own detailed FAQs. I have gone through them at low level, line by line, and made notes of important points. For me, this is a question bank. My experience and research shows 50% of questions come from FAQ. Whether you use your own preparation or pay training, you need to review these FAQs. They are the best material available for passing the exam in your first attempt. Last but not least, white papers from AWS website is really important for the exam. AWS exam blueprint itself suggests reading five of the white papers. And here they are. Overview of Amazon Web Services. Overview of Security Processes. AWS Risk and Compliance White Paper. Storage Options in the Cloud. Architecting AWS Cloud Best Practices. Mainly focus on Overview of Security Processes White Paper where you may find 15 to 20 percent of exam questions from this particular single source. One more free resource you can add in your list is my website awspro.academy. Going forward, in addition to study guide, I am planning to provide one exam tip every day along with a sample exam question for free. Please make sure you subscribe and receive the exam tips and sample questions as soon as possible. In this video, we will see how to get hands-on practice, where we can find a lab to practice. I strongly believe and can speak from my experience, the hands-on practice which is really important for the exam. Not only it helps you to remember what you learn, but also it helps you to score high in the exam. Again, not to worry, Amazon provides free tier account which will help you to practice. Check aws.amazon.com slash free. Once you have created your account, you get 12 months of free service from your sign up date. When your 12 months free usage expires, or your usage exceeds the free tier limits, you have to pay standard rates. For example, free tier covers 750 hours of EC2 micro instance, 30 gig of elastic block storage, 5 gig of S3 standard storage, 750 hours of relational database in single availability zone. Not only these four services, you may get many other services for free. You can find all free services and their utilization limits under aws.com slash free page. I don't think you will need more than free tier limits for your exam preparation. But please be careful. If you exceed your limit of free tier usage, you will be billed from there on. So after you finished using these services, make sure to terminate or delete them immediately. For example, if you create an EC2 instance for your practice and once you are done for the day or if you think you will not be using them for next few hours, terminate the instance. It is really easy to recreate them when you will need them again. I missed doing this part. So I ended up paying $80 in my first month. Also, I recently came across Quick Labs. Check them out at quicklabs.com. They are Amazon partners who will provide live lab along with a set of instructions. They will walk you through real world scenario use cases. Some of my students have found them very helpful. With their lab, you will have access to actual environment where you want to learn not a stimulation or a demo environment. Labs may be accessed through a standard browser anywhere they are accessed via internet. You can use Quick Labs 
for learning and as well as hands-on experiments. You will be charged only based on the number of credits you are using, but some introductory labs are available for free. It is worth to check them out. Hope you have all the resources now to get started. You have study material, you have a lab to practice. The next step is to build your study plan. I will provide some tips and techniques to create one in the next video. In this video, we will see how to make a study plan or a study approach. Studying for Solution Architect exam for your certification requires great amount of time and diligence. This is not the test that you can pass simply by one or two overnight study sessions. I know so many of certified professionals who have devoted three hours a day for a month towards studying for the Solution Architect exam. And I am one of them. In this video, I will provide a proven approach which has given me the success in my AWS certifications. And I highly recommend the approach on how to plan the study and also how I went through the materials in most logical and most effective manner. But you have the option to either use my approach or make your own. If you are already established in your career and have not taken any exam for a long time, your study skills may be a little rusty. But don't fear due to it. It is possible to master all the exam topics required to get Certified Solution Architect. You just need to take systematic approach towards studying for the exam. As I mentioned earlier, all you need is minimum 4 to 6 weeks of preparation time. Also, you are expected to spend 3 hours per day. If you can spend less hours per day, please plan for more weeks. In total, we are talking about 100 hours of preparation, here to get success in your first attempt, guaranteed. As part of preparing for Solution Architect exam, you are going to look into various number of topics like S3, EC2, VPC, Route 53, application services, and how to secure and encrypt the data. In order to have consistent approach, I recommend you to follow a simple study process. There are three steps. Let's go through them now. The first step. Before diving deep, as you are getting ready, survey the study materials. Get familiar with the topics and review the content at high level from either paid resource like video libraries or from free resource like FAQs and developer guides. Again, a good reference material for this process is my exam study guide, which we will review later in this course. Since there is no published book or exam preparation guide where you can follow blindly chapter by chapter, this step is very important. By doing the above step, you will get a map of what you need to study and where to start and where to find information regarding each topic. It also makes it easier for you to put information into a sensible order that you can more easily retrieve from the memory. Second step, identify what you want to learn each day. Before you start reading the material, try to understand what you like to achieve at the end of the day. In some cases, you like to gain hands-on experience on designing or integrating some AWS service or just memorizing some numbers and facts on other cases like cost of service or availability of AWS service. This approach makes you a researcher rather than the reader. You may ask me like why you need to be a researcher? Remember, the exam does not just test your theoretical knowledge of the subject. It is more into applying the concept into real world problems and designing a solution based on the best practices. Being a researcher will be more helpful for the exam than a reader. The third step. Study in increments. If you plan to spend 3 hours on a given day, break up your study session into smaller chunks of 30 minutes incremental slots. The good thing about the exam preparation is, you don't need to just study the concepts, you may need to practice them on labs. So read the materials or view the videos for the first 30 minutes and practice the same in the next 30 minutes. Also make sure to take short breaks between sessions. 
These techniques can help you to stay focused because you know the entire time that you are never far away from taking a break. It is also proven that when learning, you are more attentive at the beginning as well as at the end. If you are using my study guide, this is the main reason why I break down my study guide with smaller iterations under each service. That's your basic study process. You can apply these three steps to any exam preparation, not just for AWS Solution Architect. Let's now move on to some best practices or tactical approach for studying this exam in the next video. In this video, let's see how to schedule your study or tactical approach for studying this exam. There are total 10 sections which you need to study or review for the exam. We will review all these 10 sections briefly later in the course using my exam guide. This is how I did it. I had three rounds of review of entire 10 sections. It took me 30 hours of each round. I suggest you to follow the same approach. In your first round, spend around 40% of your time on watching videos on various topics and 60% of your time on practicing these concepts on AWS free tier account. You can spend 3 hours for each section from my exam guide. Let's move on to the second round now. In your second round, spend around 30% of your time watching the same videos but skipping on some basics and 30% of your time on practice. Since you already reviewed this concept before, it won't take as much as your first round. Use the remaining 40% of the time on FAQs or developer guide. Make sure to download them, read line by line and highlight the important points as you see in my screen now. Before moving to the next round or the third round, please review the AWS exam blueprint from AWS website. Remember, we covered this earlier in this video and I told you not to worry and tabled it then review at later time. Now is the good time to review this document after you have completed your second round. Now you will be able to understand what they are looking for in the exam and also identify what you are missing in your preparation. Let's move on to the third round after reviewing the exam blueprint. In your third round, spend around 25% of your time on watching the videos. If you use video courses from Linux Academy or A Cloud Guru, you should watch videos on 1.5 or 2x speed that helps you to review them faster. Spend another 25% of your time on hands-on labs but mainly focus on advanced topics which you are still not able to understand after already have completed two rounds of review. So you have another 50% of remaining time. In your 50% of your remaining time, review the fake materials, sorry, review the FAQ materials with main focus on highlighted area which you identify and highlighted as important during your last round. Remember, in your last round, you downloaded those materials and highlighted the important points. Just focus those highlighted points in your third round. In addition to FAQs, you may also need to refer developers or user guides or even sometimes few other third party websites for more information that may not be available in your study resource or FAQs. 15 to 20 percent of questions will come from these third party resources. These three rounds may take another 90 hours of study time and use the leftover time to review the white papers. I hope I have managed to provide you with effective study approach which you will need for successfully facing your AWS certification exam. In the next video, I will walk through the second page of exam blueprint and see what service or domain which we will be needed to prepare for the exam. In the last video, we reviewed different domains measured by the examination, but now we see what AWS services we should focus for the exam preparation. The first topic which we are going to look into is identity and access management.
identity and access management allows you to control and manage access to AWS services and resources for your users and groups. You may find between four to seven exam questions. Simple storage service S3 is the next topic. Amazon S3 provides secure, durable, highly scalable object-based storage. You may find between four to six questions in the exam. The third topic is non-S3 storage services. Expect between three to four questions in the exam. Under non-S3 storage, CloudFront is the first service which you will be studying. CloudFront is a global content delivery network service. Next service is import and export using Snowball. Snowball is a data transfer device used to import or export data from and to Amazon Cloud. Storage Gateway is the last service under this topic. Understanding of various storage gateways and the difference between them is enough for the exam. The fourth topic is EC2, the most important topic for the exam and the backbone of AWS. It is a web service that provides resizable compute capacity in the cloud. You may find between six to eight questions on it. Let's move on to the fifth topic, Route 53. It is a highly available and secure domain name service from AWS. Expect between two to three questions on it. The sixth topic is database services. Amazon Relational Database Service support seven different database engines, Aurora, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres SQL, MySQL, and MariaDB. The next service under this topic is DynamoDB. Just glance through it. Solution Architect exam does not concentrate on Redshift or Elastic Cache services. Basic use case for both services is well enough for the exam. You may find between three to four questions on all the above services. The next topic is Virtual Private Cloud, VPC. VPC is logically isolated section of Amazon Web Service and function as your own data center. Expect between two to three scenario-based troubleshooting questions where you may need to figure out the right configuration of the VPC. Next service is VPN. You cannot skip VPN when we talk network and security. There might be a single question regarding VPN. Last service in the VPC is a Direct Connect. AWS Direct Connect helps you to establish a dedicated network connection from your local network to AWS. You may find between 8 to 10 questions on all the above services. The next topic is managed services. AWS provides a variety of managed services to use with your applications. You should focus on the following key topics under this service. 1. Simple queue service. 2. Simple workflow service. And 3. Simple notification service. Expect around two to four exam questions from these topics. Next topic, Active Directory integration. We cannot classify this as a separate service, but more on functionality and feature provided by AWS. And I would rather say one important exam topic, which spreads across multiple services, where you can for sure expect a question or two. Let's move on to other secondary topics. Topic 10, which may appear in exam sometime. Get a clear understanding of CloudWatch, how it differs from CloudTrail. Basic knowledge of following topics is good. Lambda, Data Migration Service, Aurora, Elastic Transcoder, Kinesis, OpsWork, Elastic File System, Consolidated Billing, Resource Groups and Tags. Just review the intro section of these topics from AWS website. Sometime you may get a question or two from these topics. The last important topic, 
Review the following white papers from AWS website. Mainly focus on five different white papers. One, overview of Amazon Web Services. Two, overview of security processes. Three, AWS risk and compliance. Four, storage options in the cloud. Five, Architecting for AWS Cloud Best Practices Again, mainly focus on overview of security processes white paper from which you are highly expected to get 68 exam questions. Just I provided a brief overview of AWS services here. If you want more details and if you want more information, please watch the last section of this video course, Exam Guide Review where I walk through my exam guide page by page. In the next video, we will see how to use the practice test and where to register for it. In this video, we will see how you can use practice test to figure out where you stand on your exam preparation. I am sure by now, you will be ready to take exam. To check if you are ready for the exams, Please take practice test from Amazon and assess your progress based on how much you can score. Practice tests include a series of sample exam questions delivered in a timed environment. Associate certification practice test includes 20 questions and you are expected to complete them in 30 minutes. It does not come free you will have to pay 20 US dollars for using the practice test. Not to forget, Amazon testing partner is Criterion. To create your account, go to webassessor.com slash AWS. Under the getting started section, create a web assessor account by clicking account creation link. After creating the user account, log in and register for the practice exam by paying $20. When you register for actual exam, you will have to follow the same process. You cannot use Amazon website or your AWS credentials to register or buy any kind of exams including practice test. If you have managed to score more than 90% in your practice test, it is the right time to schedule your certification exam. If you have scored less than 90%, you will need to repeat your study with focus on low scoring areas or your weak areas. The benefit of practice test is that you will receive an overall score and the breakup score for each section of the test which will help you to identify areas to improve and also idea on where to focus more before the real exam. Another good news for you. To improve the success of our students, we in AWS Product Academy developed an exam simulator with 390 exam questions. We have 6 full exams with 65 questions in each. It is available for anyone even if you are not student attending our live online classes. It costs only $19 and comes with 100% money back guarantee. If you want to try or get a feel for it, you can try our free sample exam with 20 questions. AWS charges you $20 for 20 questions, but here you get 390 questions for less price. Our simulator is not an exam dump. Our questions are similar in pattern and quality of the actual exam. I strongly believe this is another tool to Assess your knowledge and readiness for the exam. If you can score more than 85% on each exam, you are ready to face the exam. Please check out our website awspro.academy for more details or feel free to send an email at info at awspro.academy. Also, if you subscribe our newsletter under signup.awspro.academy, you will receive 10 questions each week. In this video, we will see what to expect on the exam day and review different types of exam questions. You will get 130 minutes to complete 65 questions and the exam fee is 150 US dollars. 
On average, you get two minutes to complete a single question. There are two types of question on the exam. Multiple choice has one correct response and three incorrect responses, which we call them as a distractor. Multiple responses has two or more correct response out of five or more options. I will be providing more examples on different exam question types in the upcoming slides. Your results for the exam are reported as a score from 100 to 1000 range with a minimum passing score of 720. Your score shows how you performed on the exam as a whole and whether or not you passed. To register for an exam, sign in to aws.training and click certification in the top navigation. Next, click AWS certification account followed by schedule new exam. Let's see sample of different question types now. Here is the sample of multiple choice with single best option question types. Here you may have four to five options to choose from. Select one option that best answer the question or complete a statement. There is a radio button next to the option which you can select and click next to move on and it will not allow you to select more than one option. Selecting one option is much easier than when you need to select multiple options. The next question type is multiple response pattern. In multiple response type, you will need to select more than one option that best answer the question or completes the statement. Next to the question, you can see number of selection or choices which you need to select for that particular question. In this example, it is given choose two answers. Sometimes you may need to select even three or four options for certain questions. This question asks you to choose all the available choices that correctly apply to a situation. Because you must choose every correct option or multiple option in order to get the question answered correct and to get scored correctly in this question. These questions are extremely difficult to guess. Remember, you don't get partial score for just selecting one or more right options. Even if you select one wrong option out of two or three, you will not get any additional score. Now let's move on to scenario based. I am sure you have noticed that I have mentioned multiple times scenario based questions during my last session where we reviewed the exam topics or sections from an exam guide. These questions are commonly referred to as case study questions. The basic idea is that the exam will provide you the long and detailed scenario, typically a case study, and then ask you a question based on that scenario. Here is an example of it. Sometimes you may get a scenario question with 8 to 10 lines or a table with the given details which you will need to analyze. Also, you may need to select multiple options as we seen earlier. Either it is a small or long, it is a time killer in the exam which requires you to focus and understand before answering. Since you get only 80 minutes for answering 60 questions, it is very important to keep up with clock and not to get trapped with scenario based questions. One good thing, the exam provides you an option to mark questions for review by checking a checkbox for the questions to be listed for review at later stage and move on to the next one. Once you are done with all the questions, you can again go back to those questions which marked for review and work on them. I highly recommended you to use this approach for scenario based questions which you cannot answer within minutes and need time to analyze and understand before answering. We all know elimination is the best approach for scoring in test. For example, if there is a multiple choice question as a four possible answers and you are able to eliminate two of those answers, then you improve your odds of guessing the correct answer from 25 to 50 percent. One last thing, regardless of the type of questions, however, you should always guess when you don't know how to answer the question because AWS does not impose a penalty for incorrect guesses. 
which means no negative marking. So you don't leave any single question unanswered. You never know when a single correct guess might be just enough to put you over the pass or fail threshold. If you need any more information regarding the exam, please visit aws.amazon.com slash certification slash FAQs. And with that, we have reached the end of our video series on how to get your AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate. The next section of this course is totally optional. In the next section, I will walk through my study guide that contains 10 different study sections which needed for your exam preparation. Let's review each domain in detail so that you can get to know what AWS is looking for from the exam standpoint. You can skip this section if you are new to AWS and haven't got a chance to start your preparation. After your first round of study, you can come back here and watch this section. Domain 1 Design Resilient Architecture covering 34% of exam questions. Let's see the definition of resiliency first. Resiliency is the ability of an infrastructure to recover from certain type of failure and yet remain functional from the customer perspective. Resiliency can also called as recoverability. In other way, the failure of one component should not cause the failure of other. When one component like an EC2 instance is temporarily unavailable, the rest of the infrastructure should still support the application availability. The first objective here is selecting a reliable or resilient storage. Primary focus of this objective is a storage service like S3, EBS, CloudFront, DynamoDB and RDS. So focus on these services. Apart from traditional storage services, you should focus on EFS. Amazon EFS is designed to meet the needs of multi-threaded applications and application that concurrently access data from multiple EC2 instances. It provides highly durable network file system. The second objective here is to design decoupling mechanism using AWS services. Application complexity increases, a desirable attribute of an IT system is that it can be broken into smaller loosely coupled components. To decouple your application, focus on services like SQS and SNS. You can employ decoupling using multiple approaches. One approach that can reduce the operational complexity of running application is to use serverless architecture. You can upload your code into AWS Lambda Compute Service and the service can run the code on your behalf using AWS infrastructure. By using Amazon API Gateway, you can develop scalable API powered by Lambda. When combined with Amazon S3 for serving the static content assets, this pattern can deliver a complete web application. At last, Microservice architecture make it easier to implement failure isolation. AWS provide multiple services to support microservice architecture including ECS and API Gateway. Please focus on these services for the exam. The third objective under this domain is to design a multi-tier architectural solution. There are so many AWS services that can support multi-tier architectural solutions but focus on the mentioned services for the exam. Load balancing with Elastic Load Balancer or Application Load Balancer allows you to spread load across multiple availability zones. You can use Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling Group for redundancy and decoupling of services. Caching with Amazon Elastic Cache provides caching services with Redis or Memcached to remove load from application and database and lower latency for frequent request. 
Managed database with RDS creates highly available multi-AZ database architecture. DNS services with Amazon Route 53 provides DNS service to simplify domain management. Edge caching with Amazon CloudFront caches high volume content to decrease the latency to the customers. At last, static storage and backup with Amazon S3 which enables simple HTTP based object storage for backups and static assets like images and videos. The last objective under this domain is to design highly available fault tolerant architecture. A system is highly available when it can withstand the failure of an individual or multiple components. For example, hard disk, servers, network links, etc. You should automate the recovery and reduce the disruption at every layer of your architecture. The most used fault tolerance features in AWS world is region. AWS services internally use multiple availability zones configuration to achieve high availability design goals. Each availability zone is engineered to be isolated from failure in other availability zones. Another important component for high availability is using the load balancer with auto scale. For example, a fleet of application servers can be distributed across multiple availability zones and can be attached to the Elastic load balancer service. Elastic IP addresses can be used as a workaround for a host or availability zone failures by quickly remapping the address to another running instance. In order to build fault tolerance applications on EC2, it is important to follow the best practices such as infrastructure as code, using Amazon EBS for persistent storage, and taking advantage of multiple availability zones and elastic IP addresses. Also, Route 53 is a highly available scalable DNS web service. Same as ELB, if you have multiple resources that perform the same function, you can configure DNS failover so that Route 53 will route your traffic from unhealthy resource to a healthy resource. CloudWatch alarms play a major role in high availability design solution. You can create a CloudWatch alarms that sends an SNS message when a particular metric goes beyond a specific threshold. Those SNS messages can execute a AWS Lambda function or trigger an auto scaling action. For production, you should use RDS multi AZ deployment, which creates synchronous replicated standby instance in a different availability zone. The DynamoDB service synchronously replicates the data across three facilities in AWS region to provide fault tolerance in the event of server failure or availability zone failures. Amazon SQS, Amazon S3, and Amazon DynamoDB are high level building blocks that can incorporate your applications for high availability. These services are excellent source of how to achieve fault tolerance for your applications. This concludes the domain of designing a resilient architecture. I know we covered a handful of AWS services under this domain. As I mentioned before, it covers 34% of exam scope. I know this is too much of information to remember. To make your life easier, I develop a study guide which highlights all sections of the exam and related services and concepts you should focus on. You can get a free copy of my study guide by subscribing our newsletter at signup.awspro.academy. Again, it is signup.awspro.academy. Let's explore the domain to define performance architecture covering 24% of exam questions. This domain is very subjective when solutioning AWS. The word performance implies speed, accuracy, flexibility and capability. Also it implies whether or not my IT system is right for my needs. 
The first objective under this domain is to choose performance storage and databases. The optimal storage solutions for a particular system will vary based on the kind of access methods, pattern of access, throughput required, frequency of access, frequency of update, and availability and durability constraints. Well-architected systems use multiple storage solutions and enable different features to improve the performance. When we select a storage solution, ensuring that it aligns with your access pattern will be the critical to achieve the performance you want. The optimal database solution for a particular system can vary based on requirements for availability, consistency, partition tolerance, latency, durability, scalability and query capabilities. Next, selecting the wrong database solution and features for a system can lead to a lower performance efficiency. Amazon RDS provides fully managed relational database. With Amazon RDS, you can scale your databases compute and storage resources, often with no downtime. Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database that provides single digit millisecond latency at any scale. Amazon Redshift is a managed petabyte scale data warehouse that allows you to change the number or type of nodes as your performance or capacity need changes. So focus on these services under this objective. The second objective under this domain is to use caching to improve performance. The effective caching strategy perhaps the single biggest factor in creating an app that performs well at scale. The in-memory caching provided by Amazon Elastic Cache improves application performance by storing critical pieces of the data in memory for fast access. You can use this caching to significantly improve latency and throughput of many read-heavy application workloads. The next caching service you should focus on, Amazon CloudFront. CloudFront can be used to deliver your entire website, including dynamic, static, steaming, and interactive content using a global network of edge locations. In addition, focus on Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator, DAX, and Route 53 from the caching standpoint. The third objective under this domain is to design solution for elasticity and scalability. The best tool for this objective is auto-scaling, which you can use to optimize the performance by automatically increasing the number of EC2 instances during demand spikes, and decreasing the capacity during breaks to reduce the cost. Beyond auto-scaling for EC2, you can use application auto-scale to automatically scale resources for other AWS services, including Amazon Elastic Container Service or ECS, EC2 Spot Instances, Amazon EMR Clusters and DynamoDB. So focus on these services, especially their scaling capabilities. This concludes the domain of defining performance architecture. This domain covers 24% of exam scope. Let's explore the domain 3, specify secure applications and architecture, covering 26% of exam questions. There are three main objectives in this domain. Determine how to secure application tiers, determine how to secure data, Define the network infrastructure for a single VPC application. I'm combining all these three objectives and provide consolidated view on this domain. Let's start with IAM. The key AWS service that supports the protection of credential is IAM. Also, we should focus on STS, which lets you request temporary limited privilege credentials for authentication. IAM instance profiles for EC2 instances allow you to leverage the EC2 metadata service for accessing other AWS APIs. It is always important to use detective controls to identify potential threats and incidents. 
The key AWS service that supports capturing key activities is CloudTrail, which provides rich details about API calls made in your AWS account. AWS Config provides detailed inventory of your AWS resources and configuration. And CloudWatch is a monitoring service for AWS resources. The key AWS service that supports the protection of network and host level boundaries is Amazon VPC. This service gives you the ability to create your private virtual network on AWS. Amazon VPC security groups and NACLs provide firewall on instance and subnet levels. AWS Direct Connect allows you to establish your own direct connectivity from your data center to your VPC. The key AWS service that supports service level protection is IAM. Also, you should focus on AWS KMS or Key Management Service that allows you to set policies on the individual key. As we all know, Amazon S3 allows you to set bucket policies for each S3 bucket. Let's look into data protection part now. In AWS, there are a number of different approaches to consider when addressing the data protection. Data classification provides a way to categorize organizational data based on level of sensitivity. By using resource tags, IAM policies, AWS KMS and AWS Cloud HSM, you can define and implement your policies for data classification. Encryption and tokenization are two important but distinct data protection scheme. The key AWS service that supports encryption is AWS KMS, which provides an easy to use key management service. In addition, focus on AWS Cloud HSM, which provides a hardware security module and Amazon DynamoDB, which can help you to store encrypted content for your tokens. Data at rest represent any data that you persist for any duration. This includes block storage, object storage, databases, archives, and any other storage medium on which the data is persisted. Multiple AWS service supports encryption. Amazon S3 allows you to encrypt the content by selecting a KMS key on an object upload. Amazon Elastic Block Store allows you to choose master key to encrypt your block storage volume or Amazon Mission Images. Amazon RDS allows you to choose the encryption key for encrypting DB instance storage at rest, which includes backup and snapshots. Data in transit is any data that get transmitted from one system to another. When planning for an encryption in transit approach, focus on using Elastic Load Balancing, Amazon CloudFront, AWS Certificate Manager which make it easy to generate, deploy and manage certificates using TLS encryption. By defining your data backup, replication and recovery approach, you help protecting your data against deletion or destruction. The key AWS service that supports data backup, replication and recovery is Amazon S3. Focus on areas like Amazon S3 cross-region replication, Amazon S3 lifecycle policies and versioning, and also Amazon EBS snapshot operations. This concludes the domain of specify secure application and architecture. This domain covers 26% of exam scope. Let's explore the domain 4, design cost optimized architectures, covering 10% of exam questions. The first objective under this domain is to determine how to design cost optimized compute. When provisioning systems on AWS, you need to understand the requirement of adjusting the service capacity. The key AWS service that supports an approximate provisioning approach is Amazon CloudWatch, which enables you to collect and track metrics. Right sizing is using the lowest cost resource that will meet the technical specification of a specific workload. The key AWS service that supports right sizing approach is Amazon CloudWatch, 
and Amazon CloudWatch logs, which allows you to set up monitoring so you can understand the utilization of your resources. In AWS, there are number of different purchasing models that allow you to use EC2 instance in a most cost effective way that suits your business needs. Focus on on-demand instance, spot instance and reserve instances. When you architect your solutions, your best practice is to place computing resources closer to your users so that you can provide a lower latency. Focus on services like Route 53 and CloudFront. Amazon Route 53 latency based routing lets you use your domain name system to route user requests to AWS region that will give your user the fastest response. CloudFront can be used to deliver your entire website including dynamic, static, streaming and interactive content using a global network of edge locations. AWS provides managed services for database such as Amazon RDS and Amazon DynamoDB which reduce cost than hosting on your own. To reduce cost, you can also use serverless or application level services such as AWS Lambda, Amazon Simple Queue Service, Amazon SNS and Amazon SCS. These various services remove the need for you to manage virtual servers for your code execution or queuing service or message delivery. Instead of using EC2 instances, you can use a serverless architecture or managed service so that you can reduce the cost. The second objective under this domain is to determine how to design cost optimized storage. Choosing the right AWS storage service for your data means finding the closest match in terms of data availability, durability and performance. Amazon offers three broad categories of storage services, object, block and file storage. Each offering is designed to meet a different storage requirement which gives you the flexibility to find the solution that work best for your storage needs. You can ask or answer few questions to figure out your storage requirements. How often and how quickly do you need to access your data? AWS offers storage options and pricing tiers for frequently accessed, less frequently accessed and infrequently accessed data. Does your data requires high IOPS or throughput? AWS provides categories of storage that are optimized for performance and throughput. Understanding IOPS and throughput requirements will help you to provision the right amount of storage and avoid overpaying. How critical or durable is your data? Critical or regulated data needs to be retained at almost any expense and tend to be stored for a long time. How sensitive is your data? Highly sensitive data needs to be protected from accidental changes, not just data loss or corruption. Durability, cost and security are equally important to consider. How large your data set? Knowing the total size of the data helps in estimating storage capacity and cost. How transient is your data? Transient data is short lived and typically does not require high durability. How much are you prepared to pay to store your data? Setting a budget for data storage will inform your decisions about storage options. So based on this question, you can mainly focus on few AWS services. Simple Storage Service or S3, Elastic Block Store or EFS. Remember, storage optimization is the ongoing process and choosing the most cost effective and appropriate AWS storage option is really important. For object stores, you want to implement Amazon S3 lifecycle policies to automatically move the data to the cheaper storage tier as data is accessed less frequently. For Amazon EBS block store, monitor your storage usage and resize underutilized volumes. You also want to delete unattached volumes and stale EBS snapshot so that you are not paying for unused resources. 
You can streamline the process of storage optimization by setting up a monthly schedule for this task and taking advantage of powerful tools provided by AWS or third party vendors to monitor the storage cost and access volume usage. This concludes the domain 4 design cost optimized architecture covering 10% of exam scope. Now let's explore the last domain, domain 5, define operationally excellent architecture covering 6% of exam question. Only one objective in this domain, choose design features in solution that enables operational excellence. The operational excellence includes the ability to run and monitor systems to deliver business value and continuously improve supporting process and procedures. Operational excellence in the cloud is composed of prepare, operate and evolve. To prepare for the operation excellence, you have to understand your workload and their expected behaviors. Also, you need to consider operational priorities, design for operations and operation readiness. The key AWS service that supports defining your operational priorities is AWS support. The key AWS service that supports designing for operation is CloudWatch which allows you to monitor AWS cloud resources and applications. The key AWS service that supports operational readiness is AWS Lambda, which enables the definition of operational procedure as code and that can be triggered by events within your environment. Operational success is measured by outcome and metrics which you can define. To operate successfully, Understanding operational health and responding to event really important. The key AWS service that help you to understand the operational health is again CloudWatch metrics and dashboards. You should anticipate operational events both planned and unplanned. Evolving is a continuous cycle of improvement over time. Implement frequent small incremental changes based on the lesson learned from your operational activities. The key AWS service that helps you to learn from experiences Amazon Elasticsearch, which allows you to analyze your log data to gain actionable insight quickly and securely. This concludes the domain 5, define operationally excellent architecture covering 6% of exam scope. In this video, we will review the required AWS services from the exam point of view. I don't want to talk about the basics like what is cloud computing or AWS and why people crazy about it. You can find number of web articles on the same topics. Let's focus on the services which you would learn as part of your exam preparation. By now, most of us know AWS has more than 70 services and they are adding more every month. As we seen earlier, the exam blueprint provides only some level of details but not concentrate on each service or focus area. It took me few days and intensive research to gather the exam topics from various sources before I could start my preparation for the exam. Based on that experience, I have created a comprehensive study guide and will let you know how to get a free copy of it at the end of this video. Through my study guide, I will be sharing the key AWS services and highly targeted exam topics under each service. To start with, Amazon has customers in 190 countries. To serve them better, Amazon data centers are located in multiple places worldwide. These locations are composed of regions and availability zones. Each region is a separate geographic area. Each region has multiple isolated locations known as availability zones. The first service which we are going to look into is identity and access management. 
identity and access management allows you to control and manage access to AWS services and resources for your users and groups. In addition to users and groups, you can create and manage roles and policy documents. You should focus on the following key topics under IAM. 1. Account Management 2. IAM Users and Groups 3. Roles and 4. Policy Document Under Account Management, main area of focus is on how to manage your own AWS account, customization of sign-in link and security status elements. Also, setting up multi-factor authentication for your account. Roles are the very important topic for the exam. You can expect between 4 to 7 questions from this particular topic. The next section is Simple Storage Service S3. Amazon S3 provides secure, durable, highly scalable, object-based storage. Expect between 3 to 6 questions from this particular topic. You should focus on the following key topics under S3. 1. Storage tiers and classes. 2. Access control. 3. Versioning and lifecycle management. 4. Encryption. Clear understanding of standard S3. S3 infrequent access. Reduce redundant storage and glacier is needed for the exam. Make sure to review the use cases for each of the above services. You can find the use cases from AWS Developer Guide. Expect one or two questions based on the total storage capacity of S3, maximum and minimum size of single S3 item, and how to upload oversized items to S3. So far, we have reviewed two sections out of 10. Let's move on to the next two in the following video. In this video, we will review the next two sections from my exam guide. Non-S3 storage services and EC2. The third section is non-S3 storage services. Expect between three to five questions in the exam. Under non-S3 storage, CloudFront is the first service which you will be studying. CloudFront is a global content delivery network service. It integrates with other Amazon Web Service products very well. From the certification exam point of view, focus on basic usage of CloudFront, different type of distribution and delivering content using signed URL. CloudFront nicely integrates with Route 53. Therefore, prepare for topics including AWS Route 53 record types and how they work with CloudFront. The next service is Import and Export using Snowball. Snowball is a data transfer device used to import or export data from and to Amazon Cloud. Storage Gateway is the last service under this section. Understanding of various storage gateways and the difference between them is enough for the exam. Let's move on to the next section, EC2. The most important topic for exam and backbone of AWS. It is a web service that provides resizable compute capacity in the cloud. Expect between 7 to 10 questions on it. To start with, review the different type of instances, mainly their use cases. In my exam guide, I have provided some specific exam tips on EC2 relationship with security groups and IAM role. You may get a question or two from EBS snapshots and Amazon machine image topics. Focus on creating snapshot from volumes copying snapshot from one region to another and restoring volumes from snapshot. Also, there is a possible exam question regarding the steps you should follow when creating a snapshot from a RAID setup. As part of EC2, I highlighted key exam topics regarding elastic load balancer, 
auto scaling and amazon machine images solution architect exam emphasizes more on some scenario based questions those scenario based questions typically based on all the services combined we have reviewed four sections out of 10 let's move on to the next two in the following video in this video we will review the next two section from my exam guide route 53 and relational database services rds let's move on to the fifth section route 53 it is highly available and scalable domain name service from aws in route 53 concentrate on different record types including c name a alias and mx records there is a heavy emphasis on alias record and how it can be configured for naked domains or zone apex and mapped to elastic load balancer and cloud front as a solution architect you should know the difference between a and c name records and cast off using one over other from the exam point of view route 53's routing policies are important to understand there are five different routing policies simple weighted latency failover and geolocation under route 53 be prepared that might be a scenario based exam question from this topic the sixth section is amazon relational database service rds it is an important exam topic for certified solution architect preparation amazon rds supports seven different database engines aurora oracle microsoft sql server postgres sql mysql and maria db your exam preparation should include basic db setup in multi availability zone possibility of service changes and maintenance window support also you should have a clear understanding of read replicas and limitations two different licensing models expect some questions from db backup snapshot and as well as encryption the next service in the guide is dynamo db I have provided some exam tips on what to expect including basic use case db format read and write capacity units read consistency models and pricing structure solution architect exam does not concentrate on redshift or elastic cache they are the last services in this particular section basic use case for both services is well enough for the exam Redshift is a data warehousing solution from AWS and used for online analytical processing. Sometime there might be a scenario based question where you need to select either RDS DB type or Dynamo DB or Redshift. Expect a question from Redshift encryption with cloud HSM and key management service. Be familiar with difference between OLAP versus OLTP and two in memory caching engines memcached and redis that's it for now we have reviewed six sections out of 10 so far let's move on to the next two in the following video in this video we will review the next two section from exam guide virtual private cloud vpc and managed services What is virtual private cloud? VPC is logically isolated section of Amazon Web Service Cloud and function as your own data center. Be familiar with difference between default and custom VPC. When you configure your VPC, you can select its IP address range, create subnets and configure routing tables, network gateways and security settings. You should have a clear understanding on these concepts. You will find multiple exam question regarding connectivity of EC2 instance in private and public subnet. There are multiple factors that can affect connectivity including security groups, network access control list, 
routing tables and internet gateway. Expect between 2 to 3 scenario based troubleshooting exam questions where you may need to figure out the right configuration based on the above factors. Next, VPN. You cannot skip VPN when we talk network and connectivity. There might be a single question regarding VPN, so focus on setting up a new hardware VPN with various components used. Last section in VPC is Direct Connect. AWS Direct Connect helps you to establish a dedicated network connection from your local network to AWS. You should understand the basic use case. Components need to be set up direct connect, connection speeds and failover options. There are couple of scenario based questions where you should be able to identify a successful failover scenario of a direct connect over VPN, cross account usage and billing, using multiple virtual interfaces in a VPC. Finally, we are done with VPC. Now you know why you can expect 8 to 10 even more exam questions from the VPC. VPC is another important exam topic next to EC2. The eighth section is managed services. AWS provides variety of managed services to use with your applications. You should focus on the following key topics under this service. 1. Simple queue service. 2. Simple workflow service. 3. Simple notification service. Expect around 2 to 4 exam questions from these topics. Simple queue service is the main topic from exam point of view. Be familiar with SQS usage and how it helps to decouple an application. Focus on delivery of message including long versus short poll, message visibility timeout and default retention period. Other two services simple workflow service and simple notification service do not appear in the exam very often but it's better to review the basic at least once. We have reviewed 8 sections out of 10 so far. Let's move on to the next two and the last sections in the following video. In this video, let's see the last two sections of exam study guide. Next section, Active Directory Integration. We cannot classify this as a separate service, but more on functionality and features of AWS Office. And I would rather say one important exam topic which spread across multiple services. In Active Directory integration, you can expect a question or two. Try to get some basic understanding of AWS provided directory services. There are two different AWS provided directory services, Simple AD and AD Connector. However, the exam mainly focuses on Active Directory Federation services. You should know use case for Enterprise Federation how the integration between ADFS and AWS works and the setup details. Best way to prepare for this to review a blog post enabling federation to AWS using Windows Active Directory, ADFS and SAML 2.0 under AWS security blog. Finally, we are done with all important exam topics. Let's move on to other secondary topics section 10 of my exam guide, which may appear in exam sometimes. Get a clear understanding of CloudWatch, what type of metrics you can track using CloudWatch, minimum time interval for collecting them, and how it differs from CloudTrail. Basic knowledge of the following topics is good. 1. Lambda 2. Data Migration Service 3. Aurora 4. Elastic Transcoder, 5. Kinesis, 6. Ops Work, 7. Elastic File System, 8. Consolidated Billing, 9. Resource Groups and Tax. Just review the intro section of these topics from AWS website. Sometime you may get a question or two from all these 9 different topics.
The last important study material which you cannot miss is the white papers from AWS website. Here are they. 1. Overview of Amazon Web Services. 2. Overview of Security Processes. 3. AWS Risk and Compliance White Paper. 4. Storage Options in the Cloud. 5. Architecting for the AWS Cloud Best Practices. I think I mentioned this earlier in the video. Mainly focus on overview of security processes from which 